Good afternoon and welcome to a new unique webinar session. My name is Sita Küsel, Business Development Manager at Unique Europe. And with me is Igno Broikas, Executive Director from DB2 Vision. Today we will explain how the Unique H520E and the La Quinta Multispectral Camera are the perfect and one of the most affordable solutions to manage crops more effectively. At Unique, we offer a diverse selection of drone models for a wide range of commercial applications. The H520E utilizes Unique's proven six rotor platform and incorporates enterprise grade cameras and mission planning software for high end commercial use. It is the perfect solution for long flight times with a robust technology in an all in one package. La Quinta is the first of its kind. A single sensor, single optical path, high resolution for narrowband, multi spectral camera for precision agriculture. IGNU will give us a brief recap of the first webinar and then we will see how to get and process the multi spectral imagery. At the end of the session, we will have time to answer your questions. Please feel free to write them in the chat box. Now I give way to IGNU from DB2 Vision. Hi everyone. Um, first of all, thank, thank you Dieter for the introduction. Uh, to those who are tuning in for the second time, as we had our first webinar last November, thank you for joining us again for this follow-up. Uh, for those who are joining for the first time, thank you very much for joining us as well. Uh, do not worry about the word follow-up because I'm going to run through with you what was discussed last time so you don't fall straight into the middle. Um, what was discussed last time? Basically, it was the introduction of uh, the new te combined technology of the unique H520 and the new H520E together with our multispectral agricultural camera La Quinta. Very proud to announce it, uh, discuss the pricing, uh, but also how it generates the images and not just generate the images, how do you process it into the different software programs that are out there and what does the output actually look like um, in agricultural indices st stitching and what coloring it uh, depicts in showing crop vigor and crop stress. So after that, we had a Q&A and one of the feedbacks we got was uh, great. Now we know how to process the imagery. Now we know how the imagery looks like, but how do we put that into real life practice? So the farmer would say, OK, I have this now, but what do I do to actually start improving my crops uh, or the drone service company that is now considering moving into agriculture as well, how do we advise those farmers or foresters to improve uh, their land and the health of their greens? Very valid question. And rather than us as manufacturers, Dieter from Unique or myself from DB2, uh, to tell you how to do this, we opted to invite special guests that are um, specialists in their respective fields and do this for a living. I will introduce him after uh, uh, recapping what we discussed last time. Um, go into that what uh, who are we we are DB2 vision uh, we're a company uh, of uh, three uh, owners that started it in 2016 with the development of our camera which we were able to finally release at the end of summer of 2019 what was our goal it was to develop high-tech but low-cost equipment to become financially accessible to every individual farmer or agronomist and what was our vision is to enable this farmer to maximize its crop output while using the minimum amount of resources. And now there is a twofold benefit. It's not just that you will be able to identify where on your land you suffer from crop stress before the human eye can see it. Um, um, and before the human eye can see it actually means that you can take measures during the season rather than being confronted with what happened at the end of the season uh, uh, by the loss of the crops that you suffered and having to improve on it next year. 
uh, it also enables you to um, uh, identify exactly where that stress is located so you can treat it accordingly exactly there where it's necessary and treat it uh, to a lesser extent where it's not necessary that saves valuable resources and not just that over spraying because you don't know exactly where it is necessary more than uh, in other places um, will lead to less soil degradation which we can all suffer from as we know and it's not just a second or third world issue uh, this is something that happens in our western world just as much or well not just as much but definitely also so it has a threefold benefit of doing this multispectral imaging um, 2020 we started uh, on the market and it was uh, for us the start of being able to push this into the real volume market with our competitive pricing we all know what happened in 2020 let's not get into that too much we all suffered from it nevertheless we did get on the market and it culminated into the awesome q4 where unique and db2 vision signed a global partnership and provide a full solution rather than just an element that can uh um, work into that solution a farmer is not looking for a camera or a drone he's looking for a solution and that was what we were able to provide okay going on um, what is La Quinta? It is the fully featured yet lowest cost multi-spectral AgTech camera in the world and not just by a couple of cents it's 40% lower cost than the next camera in the world market out there. Um, why? Uh, because we used a revolutionary multi-spectral method and able to achieve this and what is revolutionary about it? Well if you look at other cameras out there we're definitely not the first uh, rather than using a box uh, containing several cameras and several lenses, each uh, identifying one part of the spectrum and capturing one part of the spectrum, uh, necess uh, necessary having to align those imagery to uh, become one uh, uh, multi-layered image, um, uh, we are, uh, were able to develop a dual filter layer technology to capture those four narrow bands in red, green, and blue, and near infrared out of one high resolution sensor and one optical path, meaning you are guaranteed of every image and every spectral band being uh, captured of the same exact area. This saves time in processing, this saves time in precision, uh, and this also um, uh, has the extra benefit of having to record only from one sensor rather than multiple, which can, uh, enables the recording device to record faster and you can f uh, fly faster as well as uh, uh, upping your fr uh, frame rate so you can take those pictures faster. Uh, it's full of uh, hybrid sensor data. Uh, we do not skimp on any functionality or, 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 or features. Uh, please ask Unique for a data sheet if you do not have one yet. Um, uh, so I won't need to go into that any further. Um, what we also discussed were the multiple uses. Our special guests are going to focus mostly on the two main items being crop monitoring and forestry, but there's more out there that you can do with multispectral imagery, and especially for the service companies doing multiple applications, this is important to know. So after crop monitoring, I won't discuss that because that's what the guests will do as, far, as well as forestry. There are also other items I name you uh, algae bloom detection. This is a serious problem uh, with countries with large coastal areas uh, and algae bloom causes major public health issues uh, not just for us but also for the ecosystem and countries that uh, um, have a large fish fishery economy suffer uh, uh, severe damages every year because of algae. Uh, just to name uh, Norway as an example, they use tens of millions of euros on this algae bloom because the fishery goes down because of this. So this is something definitely that would be worthwhile focusing on. Uh, urban green and health analysis. Of course, in a city you need oxygen just as we do anywhere else and it's uh, 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 very vital to be able to establish how much greens you have 
in your city how the health status of it is uh, in an in a, in an environment that's a lot more challenging than an open forest uh, to see whether you have enough oxygen production for your population um, then uh, I want to end up with a very vital one for, for especially for farmers and that's insurance protection um, what if your land gets damaged? Damaged uh, because of uh, uh, issues out of your control, meaning um, the bad weather causing damages or birds uh, um, um, uh, destroying your crops or other animals. Uh, being able to visualize where the damages uh, have occurred, but not just where the damages have occurred, but to what extent and what resulted this into and how much damage this actually produced is very important to be able to turn over to your insurance company to get a refund on the um, uh, damages incurred. So this is a very a vital aspect in which you can help the farmer uh, in retrieving uh, all the damages that he has suffered. Okay, going on to where this is actually all about and the introduction of our beautiful combined technology uh, leading up to the H520E now being available with the multispectral camera as well. The mount is finished, you can order it starting today. Actually, Unique or Lady placed a nice order, thank you for that. And I would definitely invite you to order more and more. Um, you can see a little bit of the pricing here already and how competitive we are to the market. I would say even unsurpassed in the global market. And I will show you that on the hand of what our competitors have for their pricing. So here you see the Parrot Sequoia. The Parrot Sequoia is the next lowest cost camera after hours in the global market. It's uh, valued at 3,200 euros. In some countries, a couple of hundred euros more. Take amount to that, you come to 37, 3,800 euros. Basically, what does that mean? For the price of that Parrot Sequoia, you can get the entire uh, unique H520E together with our camera as a combined product for almost the price of that Parrot Sequoia. So that's just to show you how competitive we are putting our technology into the market. Then there's the Micasense Red Edge, which I placed on here because it's the best selling camera in the world so far uh, 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 in, in the multispectral scene. It's a very good camera, nothing bad to say about it whatsoever, but it's expensive. It's five and a half thousand euros. And then you have the combined product, the DJI P4 multispectral, of course, based on a consumer drone, the Phantom 4, known to many people, uh, um, and with their multispectral camera put together is still um, quite a bit more expensive than what we are offering with our hexacopter. So we are very proud to be able to announce the lowest cost um, solution to the market uh, to date. Um, going on to the main event being our guest speakers. Guest speaker one is from VNAV Geospatial uh, from South Africa. His name is Rory Hickson and he is a GIS and airborne remote sensing consultant and certified drone pilot with oh, more than 20 years of experience. Uh, he uh, has a master of science degree in hydrology and geographic information systems and he has a drone service company and from that perspective he is going to tell us uh, how he advises farmers and foresters in how to improve and maintain the health of their land. Um, we're very happy to have him. Thank you, Rory, uh, and uh, I look forward to hearing you speak after this. And our second guest is actually someone from my own country. Um, uh, uh, her company is called the Data Burin, which basically means the data farmer. Her name is Nicole Bartels, and she is not only a precision farming consultant, but also a farmer herself. How good can you have it? Uh, she's a scientist and graduate of the Wageningen University of Agriculture, which is our famous agricultural university here in the Netherlands. And she will be telling us from the perspective of the farmer and how she puts this technology into practice on her own land. She was actually the first person that allowed us to fly with 
the H520 together with her camera for the very first time, uh, flying over her beets and her potatoes, uh, which was last year, even before the, the partnership with Unique and DB2 was signed. So we're very grateful to her that she is going to speak here today. So enough uh, about this uh, on uh, my, my presentation. I would rather uh, 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 go over to our special guest, uh, uh, first one being Rory. Thank you very much for listening to me and uh, have a great time listening to our guests. Bye bye. Hi, everybody. My name is Rui Hickson and I'm from South Africa, situated in the KwaZulu Natal province. I'm a consulting geospatial specialist and have nearly 25 years of experience working in the remote sensing geospatial industries. I hold a master's degree in hydrology and I'm registered as a professional GIS practitioner and a natural scientist in South Africa. I've been involved in a number of projects in Southern African countries. During the pandemic, with travel options severely limited, we have focused on translating our expertise in remote sensing to farms small scale farmers, managers, and agricultural corporations locally in South Africa. I'm here to be to talk about my experience with the multispectral Laquinta camera. To be honest, when I first came across the Laquinta camera, I highly suspected it as being a scam with the price tag being nearly half of that of other cameras on the market. I had trialed in a few multispectral drone cameras prior to the La Quinta camera, and the price tag certainly set alarm bells ringing. Believe me, in South Africa, when you suspect alarm bells of ringing, it's usually best to run. <laughs> anyway, I'm very glad I persisted in getting hold of the La Quinta camera and subsequently a demo camera, as I was completely blown away by the great support from the company as well as the innovation used in designing the camera lens and the single camera lens for multispectral characteristics. With all the components designed inside the camera, we were able to utilize various drone platforms to test the camera without having to worry about bad power connections or GPS connections or IMU connections. Needless to say, we are now proud distributors of La Quinta in South Africa and have run some very good projects with it. The option to utilize a four band imagery as a single image, as well as keep all four bands separate is proving to be very useful. We use standard drone processing software to process our imagery, mainly Metashape, but we have also used Pix4D with equally good results. These softwares utilize the data stored in the Sunshine and Irradiance sensor, which is stored in an XMP file for each image to be processed by the software without any complicated technical processing interventions from the user side. As I mentioned earlier, we've been focusing on farmers and agricultural use of the La Quinta. And one of the first projects we undertook using the camera was that of a macadamia tree. The object was to start a monitoring program that will allow us to generate crop yield estimates as well as monitor individual tree health. A, point a 3D point cloud to determine tree heights is usually the first step that we use after flying the orchard. As you can see, here's a cross-section profile of the row showing the tree hats and the trees very clearly. This is a downslope profile showing the slope of the land as well as each tree individually. These tree hats are very useful. Obviously, after taking the RGB imagery, we use the infrared imagery 
and overlay our NDVI index, which we get from the processing software. Using a bit of basic artificial intelligence, as well as other tricks, we are able to attract the, extract the exact tree outline and circumferences. And we use this imagery with our hat to generate what we call a volume index for each tree. This obviously isn't the exact volume, but a volume index. We extract the data regularly every three months and create comprehensive and easily readable graphic reports showing tree health trends which we send to the farmer. The data shows stressed areas or trees is then, is then converted to easily usable open source GIS platforms that allow the, that suit the farm. Yeah, we can see we've extracted tree hats from each field, for, uh, from each tree, as well as NDVI tree values from each tree. Here's a graphical representation which shows the trees becoming less stressed as they approach the downslope area, which is close to a street. If you view this row here, you can easily pick out a problem tree or a stressed tree, which a farmer can navigate to to investigate. When the trees are harvested, we, the harvest data will also be collected and modeled against the reported data. The data showing stress trees is then converted to, as I mentioned earlier, an open GIS platform that suits the farmer's need. These platforms, such as Google Earth or QGIS, allow the farmer to have the ability to use a smartphone or tablet to navigate to the exact area or tree in their field and intervene directly. A forestry plantation experienced widespread fires during the latter part of 2020. The team were able to mobilize within two days to the fire to record accurate data and imagery of the fire score. The team used a single camera and a quad cap, quadcopter drone, and we were able to cover just under 250 hectares in a single day. The areas were then carefully mapped out using conventional GIS software with the intention of returning to these areas after three months to quantify the true damage of the trees and see which of these trees had recovered. Here are some examples of the imagery that was acquired. The fire squares are clearly visible on the infrared imagery and the NDVI paints a true picture of which areas are affected. This area, these areas away from the roads and away from visible eyes of the foresters are extremely useful as the foresters can quantify exactly how much imagery wasn't affected, how many, how many trees wasn't affected by the fire and which areas were. Another example of a smaller section next to the fire. Again, these areas around here, away from the roads on the steep slopes, are unlikely to be assessed by the forester. The imagery shows them exactly which areas are affected. While processing the imagery we came across, for the fire damage, we came across a neighboring plantation that seemed to show that it was completely unaffected by fire. However, we could see some significant wind damage in these areas. The foresters were unaware of this damage and we were able to flag it for them to follow up with and check on over time as well. So what now? the post-flight and post-processing dilemma that farmers have. They have the Im imagery and the data, but can they put it into practical use? Most farmers we find are not GIS savvy and have minimal or no experience with geospatial aspects of farming or crop management. 
on the geospatial side. We find that one of the most important aspects of our project is transferring basic GIS skills to the farmer to ensure that they are able to derive the full benefits of data we produce for them when and where they need it. Nearly all software, road processing softwares, now allow an output of imagery, vegetation indices, as well as vectors, vector data in Google Earth format. So we always set up our clients with laptops, tablets, or smartphones using Google Earth to show them how to access that data and utilize their data to their full potential. There are a number of other freely available apps out there, as I've mentioned already, such as Avanza Maps or Q Fields, to name a few, which with a bit of practice by the farmer, will allow the farmer to work hands-on with their own georeference data and not rely on expensive GIS consultants to assist them with managing their field and their data. Here's an example of an app showing nearly all the data and important information of a fully-fledged geodatabase. This is an art view. ArcGIS database, which we all know is quite a complicated software to use if you are not GIS savvy. Yet on my small smartphone here is all the data available from the same software. I never seem to get tired of seeing farmers' faces when I pull out my trusty three-year-old Samsung S6 phone and load up one of the field maps to show them how to navigate to an almost exact point in the middle of their field and show them an area that needs their special attention or careful monitoring. Now that Lacunza and Unique have partnered to provide an official system that is fully set up and ready to fly, is likely to convince many agricultural oriented people and farmers to embrace this new technology that is available so cheaply and easily. It is going to simplify the tasks associated with launching multispectral drone and ultimately be a game changer for the agricultural industry that is for far too long being sidelined by the high costs associated with similar cameras and systems. I certainly can't wait to get my hands on one of these systems. Thank you all for your time. If you have any queries, comments, or questions, they can be emailed to me or con I can be contacted in the below links. Bye. Thank you very much for having me and giving me the opportunity to present to you on this webinar uh, some of my experiences, both as a farmer and a smart farming consultant. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Nico Battles. My company is called De Data Boerin. That is Dutch for the data farmer or of Deutsch, uh, De Data Boerin. Um, I'm a farmer's wife uh, living on a farm in the northeast of the Netherlands. Uh, I have a master's degree in soil science uh, from the Wageningen Agricultural University in the Netherlands. And professionally, I had a career in IT and uh, um, IT information management, mostly geographical information, which led me to data analysis in precision farming. Since a lot of um, data on the farm is about uh, the fields and the crops in the field, um, uh, and this uh, geographical data, I decided about five years ago to start my own firm related to data and data analysis. Um, first of all, uh, a little bit about our farm. It's about 500 hectares in the region called Veenkolonia. Vinkelonia is a region in the northeast, as you can see on the map. It uh, has a sandy soil of about 4 to 10 percent organic matter, uh, making it very suitable to grow uh, potatoes, but also uh, sugar beets. 
we grow potatoes in a crop rotation of one to two, uh, which means uh, that every two years we grow potatoes and in between uh, sugar beets and uh, wheat as alternating crops. Um, then a little bit about the data burin. Um, the data burin is an independent consultancy and extension service um, about smart farming or you could also call, to call it digital farming, uh, enabling our farmers to use smart data and sensor technology. Uh, um, we provide several services, uh, for instance, the data platform, Geopart Agriculture, um, uh, from the company in uh, Köln in Germany. Uh, it's a data platform where we can integrate and analyze all the data we collect on the, on the farm. Um, um, like satellite data, drone data, soil data, yield data. Uh, for drone data, we work together with a drone pilot who flies the drone and uh, uh, collects the images. And after that, we process and analyze uh, the images. Um, for the uh, soil scanner, we have our own scanner uh, mounted on the tractor and after scanning, we also are able to uh, process this data and add it to the platform. The traditionally um, field mon uh, crop monitoring uh, is done by field vi visits only. Uh, it has some disadvantages uh, like when farms get bigger then you will have uh, um, uh, difficulty to visit every part of the farm or every part of the field and uh, get a good overview of, uh, of the possible problems. Um, moreover, the, uh, the data is, uh, the information is sometimes what's subjective, what is good, uh, is it good enough, uh, this kind of questions. On a larger farm like ours, uh, we tend to uh, start uh, using more and extra um, uh, kind of sensors and data sources to manage the fields and the variability in the field can sometimes be quite, uh, quite big, which makes it favorable to, uh, uh, to direct the, uh, the farming business uh, to this variability. Uh, with the availability of different data sources, like the diagram in the middle, uh, soil data, crop health data, and new data, um, we can um, uh, start inter interpreta an interpretation of the, those data and uh, make in the end uh, prescriptions maps for uh, variable rate applications like sowing, fertilizing and uh, weed control. By just collecting all this data and processing it uh, and analyzing it, it gives already a lot of insight to the farmer, even when he's not uh, into variable rate uh, applications uh, at this moment. Starting in 2017, we started uh, uh, our dr first drone uh, data collection. Uh, I would like to present you some examples of the, the work we did, uh, but I have to emphasize that uh, this remotely sensed data is not the uh, truth on its own. You need some ground truthing uh, going into the field, but the drone data already gives you the direction where to go and where to have a look in the field. Uh, the first example I present you is uh, crop monitoring with a multispectral uh, camera. As you can see, the uh, image on the right is uh, um, the processed data and on the left is just the RGB uh, image. And uh, on the right, you can more vividly see, see the, uh, the differences uh, and uh, uh, the problems that, that uh, may occur. Uh, this comes uh, mostly from the um, near inf in, in, in inclusion of the near infrared band because m much of plant stress is uh, uh, seen in this uh, band, which is not visible with the naked eye, of course. 
both uh, satellite imagery and drone uh, data um, uh, benefit from the use of time series, uh, like uh, this field in, in the middle, you see here on the left hand side, the differences, uh, quite straight lines, uh, which is mostly the uh, uh, farmer's hand uh, doing something uh, on, on two parts of the field, but here in the middle and to the right, you see the more natural uh, problems occurring in this uh, example uh, based on um, the more or less organic matter in the soil. Uh, quantitative uh, data uh, based on uh, uh, trial plots. Oh, I see I uh, wrote trail plots, which must be trial plots. Uh, apart from the uh, traditional data collection, which is done in the field, drone data can also uh, give uh, a lot of objective extra uh, data, uh, like we present here with the different potato varieties, uh, also in the time series from June to September, and uh, the, the uh, development of uh, the greenness index. Uh, uh, damage assessment, both for the farmer and for the insurance uh, company, uh, drone data can uh, be very helpful in measuring the extent and also the uh, magnitude of, uh, of damage. In this particular uh, example, you see the, de the causes of uh, uh, the, well, the results of water logging. When it's too long, uh, water standing in the field, it uh, may cause uh, problems. The same goes for uh, birds. Uh, when a flock of birds <coughs> is uh, in your field, it may cause a lot of uh, damage, uh, for instance, to uh, winter wheat and, uh, like in this example, uh, on grassland. Uh, more or less a side product of, uh, of uh, drone data, of drone data collection, is uh, elevation data. And uh, though uh, the Netherlands is supposed to be quite flat, uh, we have quite some differences uh, sometimes in the in the field, which may cause uh, um, uh, may cause some influence on the hydrology of uh, of the of the field. Seed problems uh, can be uh, quite diverse. Uh, seedlings uh, which are not uh, sprouting, or uh, the seedlings are not uh, developing in the right pace. Um, then the farmer has to decide whether he uh, needs re-sowing uh, parts of the fields uh, uh, so he can do this based on information about uh, the plant counting. Uh, <coughs> in this image you see uh, is used uh, the near infrared uh, band and the bare soil is uh, uh, red, and to this background, the uh, plants are really good visible, and can be uh, this this image can be used for plant counting. Uh, my last example is uh, based on the um, uh, chlorophyll uh, index with the uh, multispectral uh, camera. Um, uh, chlorophyll in a plant, in this uh, particular example, potato plants, um, is uh, uh, very much correlated to the nitrogen uh, available or the, the nitrogen uptake. Uh, this field was uh, fertilized with manure uh, before planting, but then in June you see quite some differences in nitrogen uptake. Uh, uh, and the plants with a lower uptake uh, are now given more fertilizer uh, because they need to have some more. Um, in the, and the treatment, based on, on the drone data, we created a, a treatment map to, uh, to apply this, uh, this fertilizer. <clears throat>
Thank you very much for your attention. I hope I've given you some inspiring uh, examples uh, about how we use drone data and on our farm and for our customers. And uh, when we can help you, uh, uh, send us an email or follow us at Facebook uh, to see uh, more about the work we are doing. Thank you very much. And thank you, Rory, for your explanation. Uh, we really appreciate it. And um, I think there are a lot of questions already answered. Um, before we come to the Q&A section, um, we would uh, like to have your attention once again to the, uh, to the uh, pictures on the screen. Uh, just once again, we have the unique H520E um, uh, for almost uh, 1,999, and uh, the La Quinta multi-spectral camera uh, for 2,350. So this is really a perfect choice for uh, for the camera and for the farming. Um, we have some questions here. Um, let me see. First of all, uh, will the webinar available for download after on? Yes, it will, of course. Um, I think uh, for another one hour or two hours, uh, you will find uh, the complete webinar um, on YouTube. And um, so you can see it once again. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So let me see. Um, probably, Igno, there's one question perhaps for you. Um, so do, 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 let me find the questions, everybody. Uh, what is the best processing software for this camera? Do you have any any suggestions, Igno? But basically, what we designed the camera for it is uh, it has two uh, different kinds of data output. One is a multi-layer TIFF, and one is a single-layer TIFF um, uh, to be able to be processed by uh, uh, the most amounts of software programs out there. Uh, what we have right now is that we are compatible with, for example, Pix4D Fields and Pix4D Mapper, uh, but also Agisoft uh, uh, Photoscan and uh, now called Metashape. Um, uh, as uh, you, of course, know, Dieter, we are working together, the three of us, with Skyline Software to get that integrated there as well. Um, I've had some customers that are using it with drone deploy software. So there's the whole bunch of software out there that works uh, uh, flawlessly with our camera. Um, uh, once a customer purchases a camera, and I saw that also, so I, I can uh, immediately also answer this question, purchases a camera, uh, uh, we will grant them access to our OneDrive. So uh, there is uh, tutorials on how to process it in different kinds of software. Uh, if you have any questions on those, because there's a lot of questions I see here, uh, uh, please feel free to contact Unique or uh, myself at info at db2 slash vision uh, uh, dash vision dot com uh, so I can answer your question more specifically. So uh, basically universally compatible, uh, um, uh, uh, at least uh, uh, the big software programs out there are compatible and uh, I would be happy to provide you with tutorial data uh, to uh, get started on it. Um, another question is, uh, the cam is working with the H520 as well? Um, yeah, of course. Uh, so both uh, types of copter, the H520 and the H520E are working uh, uh, with the cam. Um, processing software that was this. Da -da -da -da, just a second. Um, there's one question with a, with a screen. Um, Do you want me to add, uh, Dieter? Yeah. Um, 
There is a, because uh, if the uh, the the screen, you know, the picture, yes, uh, yes. Is available on the on the screen. Well, um, uh, uh, usually uh, in in multispectral imagery, uh, there is a lesser need of having live feed of uh, of of the images, basically, because it's recording uh, a, a multiple layer imagery. Um, so uh, it's not something that is usually done. Although we do have a video out uh, uh, put, uh, so it is possible to connect um, uh, uh, an, an analog downlink uh, uh, so you can uh, get a live image feed on the ground. Uh, of course, we're also working with Unique on getting uh, further integration mm -hmm. with having it uh, straight on the screen of the SD16 as well. That's not something that's happening right now. But it's definitely something that is in the card. So uh, uh, that is uh, something I can tell you about that. I saw another interesting question. And while I'm speaking anyway, let me uh, uh, get on to that. Uh, yeah, the, the question uh, I keep see recurring is uh, the H520 and H520E. Of course, for those who already own an H520, yes, we have the ability to connect it to uh, uh, the H520 as well. There is a mount for it, and uh, actually it's a dual mount because uh, you can also hook up uh, an E90 camera, for example, together with the, the Quinta. Um, um, uh, so uh, for both uh, drones, it is available. Um, let me see. Um, hmm. I'm trying to look for another question. So, Dieter, please cut in if you uh, if you are quicker in uh, in, in scrolling through all the. All the yeah, yeah. Sure. I have one uh, one question um, asking if the product is uh, available in France. Uh, yes, of course. Um, just um, uh, it's from Alexander. Uh, just uh, send me an email. Uh, you will find the my my contact information on the screen. Just send me an email, and um, of course, it's available in France, and I give you all the information for that. Um, so let's try. Um, yes, I see your Wojciech that's uh, asking the question uh, that uh, H520 E mount is not available. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it has uh, just been finished, so uh, uh, it, it, it will be deliverable. Uh, so uh, that is uh, 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 from now on uh, available for both the 520E as well as the regular H520. Um, so there is no issue there and i am scrolling again to see what else there is as questions there's a question regarding trainings so um uh, of course uh, trainings for for the h520 or for the for the drone and trainings for uh, for the camera mm -hmm. uh, indeed we um um there is training available and we will um publish it on our website so we definitely will make some some workshops outside in the field together with uh, unique and db2 vision and then um we can we can show you on on the praxis uh, site this will definitely come uh, did I come from... uh yeah i see here a question is the la quinta triggered in sync with the e90 uh, uh no um basically the triggering for the camera can be done in several ways uh um uh, you can manually trigger it but uh, uh you can preset it uh to the desired frame rate that you want it whether you want it uh, at 0 0.1 frames per second or up to 1.5 frames per second you can preset before flight um uh, there will be a software update very shortly in the coming weeks that will also allow to trigger on the basis of your overlap from the previous image so if you say okay i want a new image taken when uh, there is 70 percent overlap of the previous image uh, that one will be available and also um, uh, that it will start triggering once the drone reaches a certain height so you don't have to cut off the the lift off images and the uh, and the touchdown images um, uh, those will be uh, new additions that will be coming in the coming weeks as well uh, those are software updates that are uh, easily done by the customer itself so um uh once those are released uh all customers will be notified and will be uh uh, 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 uh given a provided the software update as well as a tutorial on how to uh, install it on the camera 
Yeah. Okay, one another question from Alexander regarding the flight time, H520, La Quinta. So the flight time is as usual um, about um, um, 15 to 20 minutes um, together with the, with the uh, uh, camera, yes. So let's see the latest questions, flight time we have already. Uh, I see a question from Vladimir, uh, is data processing software for free? Uh, well, the, the ones we just mentioned, like Pix4D, Fields, and Mapper, uh, uh, are, are, are not for free, neither is Metashape. Those are paid programs, and they're, uh, of course, high-tech programs that, that uh, can be used offline. There is uh, also online uh, cloud imagery uh, uh, possible, which also uh, accounts for um, a, a subscription or paying per hectare. Uh, but uh, there is uh, freely available uh, processing software out there. Those are usually, I have to say, a bit harder to uh, to work with because they're uh, uh, they require some extra expertise into uh, processing. Um, I, I'm not an expert myself. I I, I, I freely admit. Uh, but uh, yes, there are there are software programs out there. Uh, um, you know, you're free to contact me, and I'd, I'd be happy to look into it for you uh, to to see what else is out there that uh, you can use. Okay, so I just saw another another uh, question uh, regarding availability. So, uh, of course, the camera and the copter. Um, in every country in Europe available. It's, it's a, they are worldwide uh, available. Just send me an email and um, um, I will send you all detailed information. And Igno, I think there are some more questions on your side. Cornfields can be quite difficult to... Yes. I saw that one. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting one. Well, actually, um, uh, uh, we uh, a customer of us has flown over crop fields. I just haven't had that data. Uh, I did get positive feedback over it, but uh, uh, I do realize we, we do have a lot of uh, uh, sample data available for customers to see. The problem is not everyone, not every one of our customers is willing to share their data uh, on how uh, their land is affected or it's not affected. So uh, we do not always receive the data, but um, uh, if uh, 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 Klaus wants to know about uh, Crop uh, cornfields, uh, in in uh, in particular, I, I would be happy to inquire, even if I can get the data from it, or at least get uh, an assessment on how uh, the results uh, were. So, uh, uh, Klaus, uh, please uh, feel free to contact Dieter uh, uh, and and provide him your uh, contact details, and I will get back to Dieter about that. Okay. So. Let's see another one at least. Yeah, once again, um, the cam is available, of course, in any country, and it's available at stock. Um, my contact details are on the site. You see it right now. Um, just send me an email, and uh, you will get all the information. Okay, I see another question from Alexander. Does the camera have Bluetooth to connect via via app? Yes, it does. It works on Bluetooth low energy and uh, um, uh, it works with Android uh, at this moment and in the uh, around the same time as we release the software update I just uh, mentioned a couple of minutes earlier, uh, we will also release the Apple iOS app. So from both uh, um, platforms, you will be able to control your camera in advance and set the camera uh, to your specifications. So yes, um, that is actually, oh, I also see that uh, Alexander asked about that Apple app. So uh, expect it somewhere uh, in, the, in, the coming, uh, in the coming two, three weeks. Um, let me see, is there anything else? Uh, yeah, there's one LTE module, no. The, Angus, uh, the question from Angus, so we haven't uh, an LTE module right now. Uh, it's uh, coming end of the year, something like that. <clears throat> and there's one, can be Bluetooth? This yes, yes, that's a very good question. Uh, we're using Bluetooth low energy, and of course it skips to another channel when it interferes with any type of uh, uh, um, uh, 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 interference on that band. 
but also uh, it cuts itself off once the camera has set, uh, been set with a preset so it doesn't interfere with anything else. It'll stay on until a range of about 10 meters and then it'll switch off. And once the, uh, the drone uh, uh, gets back to you uh, when it becomes within uh, five meters height of where you are standing, uh, it will reconnect with the app uh, uh, automatically and then Bluetooth will be uh, engaged again uh, to get your connection and you can uh, stop the camera from the app. Uh, you don't need to do it from the app. You can, of course, also flick the on off switch on the camera if you want to, uh, but that's how it works. And Vladimir, once again, um, the webinar will be recorded, of course, and, uh, and um, it's available on YouTube within the next two hours. And then Antonio is asking, uh, is the support to carry both cameras, E90 and La Quinta included? Uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, for the H520, we do have a mount to have both cameras simultaneously uh, uh, on the drone. Um, if we find that there is a, 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 a demand for it for the H520e, we would be happy to work on that together uh, to see whether we can make a dual mount for that as well. We do not have it ready right now. For now, it's just for the H520e, the single mount for the La Quinta. Uh, but for the H520, uh, yes, it is available to have both cameras mounted, whether an E9 or an E50 or, or a thermal camera, it's all possible. Yeah, okay. So far, I think we have all questions yeah so right now it's um uh, sorry guys if some of us uh, uh, some questions are lost in translation here because they're, they're, we're getting an, an uh, a quite an extensive list of questions if yours is not answers we will be making sure that we will run through all the questions after this webinar stops uh, and uh, get back to you uh, uh, with the answers uh, uh, through email. So uh, no worries if we were not able to answer your questions, you will get your answers uh, in the coming two days. That's a promise. Yeah, that's right. So um, at this stage, um, we will end the uh, seminar. We will come to the conclusion. So um, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, on behalf of the entire UNIC team, of course. Um, and thank you, um, Igno, Nicole, and Rory for participating and sharing your experience and your information. We really, really appreciate that. And we, um, we hope that you were able to gain some valuable insights and suggestions for your practical work as well. So as Igno already uh, mentioned, an email will be sent out to all attendees and you will get a promo code um to buy uh, the multi-spectral camera to a special price so there will be a special quotation from us to you and uh, so thank you very uh, thank you very much again and of course we're looking forward to see you again on your uh, on our next webinar so goodbye and have a nice evening <laughs>